Hi, my name is Adam Byrne, Technical Service Manager for FMC, covering Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana. Today, I want to touch on, you know, getting ready for fungicide applications in your soybean fields. The 2024 planting season was kind of challenging. There was a lot of uh, early plantings that got in, but then as we got toward the beginning of May into mid to late May, we had prolonged periods of heavy precipitation and high moisture levels. So really we had a big gap there where we were delayed. And so now we have a lot more uh, fields like you see behind me, where you have soybeans out there that are at that V3 to V4 plant stage compared to some fields out there that are R1 to R2. So there's quite a range of uh, maturity group, uh, maturity levels out there in the field right now. But either way, it's time to start thinking about uh, fungicide applications because with this moist, warm, conditions we had this year, we also are seeing plant diseases earlier and more prevalent than we have in some other years. So this year already, we've already seen the key three soybean pathogens that we see up in, our, in this territory, which is septoria brown spot, frog eye leaf spot, and circospora, circospora leaf blight. Now, septoria brown spot is there every year. We see this in almost every field. It's that small brown speckling on the lower canopy with some years it can move up into the upper canopy and in those years it can lead to significant yield loss. Otherwise though, it seems to be ubiquitous, always out there and hard to evaluate how much of an impact it's having, but it causes those lower leaves to turn yellow, senesce early and to drop those trifoliates, which then impacts pod fill at those nodes. So it's having an impact, maybe not as significant as some years. Frog eye leaf spot is probably the more uh, common or more uh, prevalent uh, pathogen in terms of yield loss. Um, so you see those circular gray, whitish gray lesions with the dark brown margin. Those show up as they move up the canopy into the upper canopy, uh, significant yield losses can occur. Now variety selection is our first line of defense with frog eye leaf spot. And there's quite a few varieties out there now that are doing a good job of kind of holding back the infection level. But frog eye remains a consistent problem. And one of the issues with frog eye leaf spot is it's got documented resistance to strobilurin chemistries throughout its you know, range from Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, uh, up to that Michigan border. So we see that uh, resistance is out there. So we want to stay away from chemistries that have that strobilurin component, um, or at least make sure we're diversifying the number of modes of action. But if that resistance is there, um, avoiding the strobilurins is key. The third one is the Cercospora leaf blight. And that looks like that bronzy kind of wash to the leaf surface, kind of like a sun scald kind of look. And when that happens, you can see some yield loss, but also Cercospora can lead to seed quality problems. So you may get a yield, but of that yield, those, those beans are either shriveled, discolored. They're not as, as, as full and healthy as, as a clean seed would be. So um, that impact also has to be taken into consideration. So, so one product that FMC has to bring to the market that we, we think is a strong option that you should consider is Lucento fungicide. It would be applied at that five fluid ounce rate with an NIS at a quarter percent volume to volume. And we, we know um, from lots of research over the years that R3 timing is probably the most beneficial timing for your return on the investment with the foliar fungicides and soybeans. Some of the key aspects to Lucento, uh, it's got two modes of action. It's got a group three triazole, flutriafol, which is a very mobile, very persistent compound. So it's got a low KOW value. So it readily mobilizes with water and, and nutrients. So it moves through the plant, it translocates. So it's, high, it's got a high systemic uh, activity. And then it also has long residual. Now, Bixafin is a group seven SDHI. It's a, a newer SDHI. Uh, has not shown any cross resistance with the older SDHIs that are on the market. It is also highly mobile, moves into the plant tissue and, and moves around and has long residual activity. So in university trials, Lucento has consistently shown to be one of the top performers in terms of suppressing soybean leaf diseases and resulting in greater return in terms of yield. And the last thing I'd like to kind of touch on quickly is with all the late plantings I just kind of mentioned earlier, we're going to have fields that we were trying to stretch that 
green, healthy plant later into the season. As we do that, we start worrying about things like green stem. We want the plants to be green as long as possible to maximize yield return or yield potential. But as we get those green plants toward harvest, we worry about making it difficult to harvest. And green stem can be caused by a lot of variety, a lot of factors, whether it's insect feeding. But one of the other things that's been tied to is strobilurin chemistries, uh, particularly pyracostrobin. So one of the things Lucento has that kind of is an advantage in that case is it has, does not have that strobilurin component. So if the strobilurin component is leading to some green stem issues, uh, Lucento will will not have that added impact or effect. So if you have any questions, reach out to one of your local FMC retailers or, uh, or representatives or visit ag.fmc.com. Thank you.